Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. particularly don't wait until tragedy happens before you take back your financial freedom what do I mean by that listen even if you have an amazing husband which I do I've been blessed I still want my own money I don't want to have to call my husband if I want to buy five pairs of shoes or buy a horse or buy a car I want to have my own money so I can make my own decisions it doesn't uh, take away from you as a matter of fact I think it adds value nobody wants to sit around and have to wait for their husband to get paid before they can go and do whatever you know God puts in your heart to do. So I think it's extremely important for you to have your own money. Now you might be saying, well, you know, I don't understand about finances as much as my husband does. Listen, it's nothing wrong if he's better in money than you are. It doesn't mean that you can't learn to become better, at least know how to balance a checkbook, know how to save money, hopefully learn how to invest. And it doesn't mean that you have to become like this huge mogul of an investor, but you need to know uh, basic things about money. This is, you know, one of my favorite movies was um, Jumping Over the Prune with Angela Bassett. Y'all remember that? She thought her husband was cheating. He wasn't cheating at the end of the movie. She finds out he's, he's losing everything and she's like, oh, don't worry about it. I've been investing over the years. Like, I could just rewind that part over and over again. I love that part because it shows you that Angela Bass Bassett was a real Proverbs 31 woman. She obviously loved her family, but along the way, she was taking money and doing what she needed to do with it. So, again, you know, all kinds of things could happen. You could, you know, have a divorce. You, your husband could die. You could get sick. I mean, what if your husband couldn't work for a month or two months? Would everything crumble because you're relying everything on him? So, Take the bull by the horn, get financially educated, and start. You don't have to start, you know, big. Start where you are, okay? And that's today's tip for the Millionaire Tip. All right, now it's time for Financial Watch. In the news today, did you know the financial experts are anticipating a collapse of the American economy? That's right. Professor Kotloff, professor of economics at Boston University, says... It will collapse, it's just a matter of when. Almost all the liabilities of the government are being kept off the books by bogus accounting. The government is 58% under finance and Social Security is 33% under finance. It stated that we are $210 trillion in debt as a nation, 210. So the question is not if, but when. All I can say is it's going to be too late, Professor Koloff says, I think our financial system is really built to fail because it combines two things that really haven't been addressed. So make sure that you get your business in order and you get out of debt and stay out of debt. And that's it for today's Financial Watch. Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. Those who have no voice and ready 
to listen, prepared to stand up for what is right, no matter the consequence, working to correct injustice, whether political or social. The Impact Network. Impact is liberating, presenting life in its fullest, and releasing your greatest potential, uncovering your purpose and your destiny, bringing spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and financial empowerment so you're free. Hey, welcome back to the Jewel Tanker Show right here on the Impact Network, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Curvin Smith. Uh, relationship expert. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. So now listen, you're a motivational speaker, international guest lecturer, and relationship expert. I mean, this, the title of the book, uh, you already know. I'm like, seven <laughs> women you should never marry. So before we dig into these seven women, because I can't wait to hear about these sisters. Glad I got my man. Thank you, Lord. But uh, <laughs> I want to know, where did your passion come to even write the book? Uh, every book that we normally write, we usually, it comes as a result of talking to someone on a plane or uh, just a conversation. And I, I wrote a book uh, prior to this, it's called When Women Talk, Men Should Listen. Mm. And so uh, in that When Women Talk, Men Should Listen, I talked about how the man is the head, but if he's the head, then the woman are the eyes because she sees stuff he doesn't see. All right. If the man is the head, the woman is the nose. She smells when the deal is not right. Mm. If he's the head, she's the mouth. She gets a bit of taste when it's not the right deal. All right. If, it's the, if he's the head, then she's the ear. She tends to hear stuff that we can't hear. Yeah. And if the man is the head, the woman is the neck. When we're out of place, she helps adjust us back in place. That is and so good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with that totally. I feel like if a husband is really tuned in and listening, mm -hmm. he can go a lot further in life, in his career, in ministry, really in every area, if he appreciates that discernment and that exactly. gift that I believe God intuitively put in that woman. So, okay, that's good. I like yeah. that. So let's move on because I want to dig right in here and talk about, first of all, I do want to ask you real quickly, how were you raised? Two-parent home, one Two single home. home? or Two-parent okay. home. Okay. Uh, parents were entrepreneurs, mom retired when she was 52 dad retired when he was 55 they did oh, wow. a great job okay. um, all our, all of my siblings have uh college degrees or advanced college degrees yeah okay now how many siblings yeah. do you have it's just four of us yeah. okay now do they take you seriously with the relationship stuff do they call yeah, you they take me well yeah they take me relation if anything finance whatever okay yeah, they do. that's good and because you know sometimes, i'm the oldest child too so oh you're the yeah, oldest yeah. okay because you know sometimes in family you're like yeah that's just curving yeah. but that's what you said i mean that really right. is right dead on Talk about what are those seven women that men should never marry? Well, there's a plethora of women that men should never marry, but okay. I probably would say out of all of the, the book would, see, because if I gave them all away, then everybody, right. but I will, I will say one of the women that, that um, tends to be a repeat is a, a controlling woman okay. or the jealous woman. Mm. And, and it, sounds, it sounds almost like it would be parallel, but a jealous woman, um, tends to have the issues with jealous women are a jealous woman would just be upset if you were just she could be jealous of your business she could be jealous of your vocation she could be just jealous of any woman that walks in the room but a controlling woman wants to inundate everything you do she wants to control your life the way mm. you dress the way you walk the way you talk wow. you know, your decisions being made and the truth of the matter is I don't care how much a woman puts her hands on her hip and shakes her head side to side she wants a man to be a real man Mm -hmm. And then when a man, when things are out of place, she wants her husband to say, hey, that's enough. Or a man right. to say, that's enough. She wants right. a real man. Right. Because if she can control him, she doesn't respect him. Ooh, that's good. That's true, too. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so now let's talk about, because I know you talk about the gold digger. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm not saying that every woman is a gold digger, mm -hmm. but did it mean that she should go with somebody broke? Uh, let's talk about that a little No, bit. Um, I think in, in a, it's a man's, not, it's his nature to give. Okay. He's biologically, he's been given parts to be a giver. Right. And a woman's biologically been given parts to be a receiver. Right. So a man loves to give and a woman loves to receive. Right. A gold digger takes it to another dimension. Okay. Uh, she seeks out him specifically for the purposes of uh, being self-aggrandizing or being able to take care of her needs. Okay. Uh, it's only going to work with a guy. She'll never date a guy 
who's a, just a bl regular blue collar guy. Right. She's looking for a guy who's on his way there or okay. almost there. Okay. And someone that could pretty much take care of her financial needs and pretty okay. much just, you know, uh, spoil her with gifts. And okay. in the book we talk about there's one uh, issue, a gold digger. She, there's a guy she's been dating for five months, mm -hmm. and she goes to the, to the store, uh, and they're in the couture department. Mm -hmm. she's, she has this $3,000 dress on, and she's in front of the, the uh, sales representatives, mm -hmm. and he says, I'm not buying a dress. And she gets upset and throws mm -hmm. a fit. Mm. Uh, and what he walks, he walks out. He gets in the car. He doesn't care about her throwing a fit because he's only known her four months. Mm -hmm. But he's bought, she wants him to buy her a three thousand mm -hmm. dollars dress. So you got to get the book. Yeah. Each each okay. thing that we talk about, there's a story for every woman there's and every. Examples. They're true stories. Yeah, true oh, stories, wow. but true we change. Stories. True stories, but we change. Okay, the so names. but I do want to ask you this. So the gold digger is only seeking him for what he can do for her. Do you find that a gold digger, most of them are not women that are professional and making money themselves? Uh, there are some. Yeah, that, I talk about that in the book too, but there's okay. a couple of different type of gold diggers. There's some women that, there's gold diggers that want status. That, you know, a woman that may be, she may marry this guy or connect with him because he can take her to that, that uh, we call Love it bon vivant or okay. the, the sophisticated, you know, take okay. her to that next, okay. you know, that's one. Then okay. there's another one that specifically just wants things. She wants you to adore. She'll never, um, we talk about in there about how there was one woman, a guy, he took her out to dinner all the time. Mm -hmm. And then finally he said, I just want you to make me one meal. I don't even care if you're a great cook or not. Mm -hmm. And she says, if you want, me to, me to cook for you, you got the wrong woman. You need to oh, find wow. somebody else. And so okay. after he's pretty much dumped his bank account, okay. he, all he asked for was a meal. Okay. It could have been oodles and noodles. It, you okay. know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. you know, so, you know, and that's, that's the, the, real, the real purpose of a woman. That's why when a man marries a woman, he should never marry her based on how cute she is, how mm -hmm. based on her shape. He mm -hmm. should marry her based on her being his covenant soulmate mm -hmm. because there's 26 different kind of woman that every man can marry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it right there. Oh, wow. Now, you <laughs> did that. You know y'all got to get the book. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let me ask you this real, real quick, though. How does, uh, how does a guy real quickly recognize when he's dating? Because obviously you're going to have to, you know, men are going to have to date different women to kind of see what should he, what are some specific things that he should be looking for. And we've got to get ready to go to a break, but I want you to stay tuned and listen to this because this is really powerful. Seven women you should never hear. I mean, y'all heard this. This is some good stuff. So we'll be right back after this break. One day when the glory comes. Here will be Dr. King, what's your next move? A march from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. Front of the I've seen the glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Impact is Differences in background, color, culture, and thinking unified to provide solutions and spark innovation. Where thinking different makes you distinct and not an outsider. Where when a neighbor is weak, another comes in strength. The Impact Network. For spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. Okay. Dr. Smith, let's talk about, because this is really good, and I think, you know, I, I know that tons of women probably taking notes, and gentlemen as well, because for women, they want to make sure they're not that chick. <laughs> and for the guys, they really need to be paying attention to this. But tell me a little bit about this controlling woman. Well, let me read a little bit about this controlling woman. Um, okay. Just kind of share really what a controlling woman is. And, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a little story here. Um, one of the things about a controlling woman, the whole time during the relationship, she is sizing you up for subtle changes. Mm. She will not only set out to change you in, every con in very cunning ways, excuse me, but also to get you to adapt to her way of thinking. Mm. Perhaps the easiest way to see the dynamics of a controller is through this short story. Sam and Harriet were on a trip to Montreal after they went into the Louis XVI restaurant. Harriet, who was fluent in spent French, pardon me, spoke to the maitre d' in French and asked for the best table in the house. While Frank glanced over the menu in the entryway, 
After they sat down, Harriet proceeded to order hors d'oeuvres and entrees without asking Sam what he wanted to eat. Mm. Harriet and the server carried on a lively conversation in French. She was laughing and smiling after the waiter walked away. Sam said to her, where are the menus, sweetheart? She said, I already ordered for us. He mm. said, why would you order for me when you have no idea what I want, <laughs> Sam demanded. Baby, I know exactly what you like, Harriet responded. And this is one of my favorite restaurants. I ordered you fish, is that okay? No, it's not. Sam mm. said, rushing his words. I wanted the pan-seared duck breast mm. with red wine raspberry sauce. She said, how did you know they have duck on the menu, Harriet asked curtly. The entire menu is written in French. Mm. Sam looked at her and said almost brusquely, je parle français pendant 15 ans, which translates <laughs> to I've been speaking French for 15 years. Wow. Harriet's face was flushed with embarrassment. Then mm. she said, well, you never told me you speak French fluently. Mm. He said, you never asked. Mm. You never asked me about anything. And she said, you don't trust me. Harriet returned with more than a hint of impatience. You need to let me take care of you. Wow. So she, so this controlling woman is not asking questions. She's just trying to tell him what to do. She takes over his life. She, she basically does what she feels like he should need. She does for him what she feels like he should need. Mm -hmm. These are the pants you should wear. I never forget uh, in, when I was in college, a, a young lady said to me something interesting. They had these pants that were in style mm -hmm. back then. And she said, I want, you know, I got these pants for you. She said, I want you to wear these pants. Mm -hmm. So we went into the store and I put the pants on. I didn't really like them, but mm -hmm. I, I know that she liked them. Mm -hmm. So I ended up buying four or five pairs, something like that. And then mm -hmm. after a while, I was like, ah, I don't want to have anything. I didn't even wear the pants mm -hmm. because, and, but it was a controlling situation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are in relationships like that, subtle control. Now we know a lot of men control. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a, there's a subtle control mm -hmm. sometimes with women. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel like they need to refine you and mm -hmm. reshape you. And mm -hmm. just le j rather than just enjoy somebody for mm -hmm. who they are. Mm -hmm. I always say, be yourself. Right. Let God use you. And somebody's right. going to love you and enjoy now, you. Now, I do want to talk about this a little bit because, I mean, isn't it natural for a woman and a man to some degree mm -hmm. make suggestions? Oh, I mean, like, I'll ask my honey, honey, which dress do you like? Mm -hmm. Or which pair of shoes do you like? Or if he says, I want to see this on you, I don't look at it as him controlling me, mm -hmm. but I look at it as him just sharing with me what he would like to see me have on. I mean, I think there's a balance, right? I mean, as long, yes, as, long yes. as he's not like, oh, yes. you got to wear this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now that's there crazy. Go. There you go. There you go. There okay. you go. That's, that's, you're, you're trying to get okay. someone controlling. You're trying to get them. See, what you're doing is you're bringing um, participation. Right. Because you're concerned. You say, well, baby, these shoes, you, you like these shoes. I always tell men uh, the, the um, foreplay is taking a woman shoe shopping. Right, right, you know, right. You want, yeah. you want to get, yeah. I said, you're out sitting out in the, in yeah. the, in the, on the bench in the mall. You right. need to be inside because that woman wants to model for you. Right. She, wants to watch. she doesn't want to ask yes, the lady next to her. Yes, because I love him to go shopping with me. <laughs> she doesn't like the lady next to her. What right. do you think about it? She yeah. wants to model for her right. man. Right, exactly. And so that's participation. But we're right. talking about control. Yeah. You're going to wear this. Right. Gonna, you, know, you don't have any other choice. Okay. This is what you, if you're going to be with me, okay. I don't want your hair this way. I want your hair that way. Right. You know, that's controlling. You know, you start trying to control someone. Okay. I don't want you to wear those shoes. I don't like those okay. shoes. I can't stand. Okay. You know, and, and it can be very abusive and abrasive. Right, exactly. And um, you end up damaging somebody's self-esteem. Right. You know, a man can hurt a woman so bad that she's not good for any other man. Mm. And I always tell, I always tell guys, listen, if you don't want to, leave her alone. Right. I said, don't put your hands in the cake. If you don't want it, just save the right. cake for somebody else. Right. Don't mess the cake up. Don't put oh, your hands good. in the cake. Don't that's lick good. the icing. Just, you know, if you don't that's want the cake, good. pull your hands out of the cake. Yeah. Let somebody else have a slice. Oh, that's good. Because you're right. A man can damage a woman so bad that it will be hard for her to heal from that mm -hmm. and be able to move on. Well, and she'll, she'll end up, see, the problem is most women, a lot of them, because they don't want to sit by the Christmas tree alone, they don't want to be spend Thanksgiving alone, they end up gravitating to Ishmael because Ishmael is what's available. Wow. But Ishmael, you got to always kiss the counterfeit before you make love <laughs> to the real thing. <laughs> that is good. Y'all better get this book. <laughs> seven women you never want to marry, and then you got seven men, men you, you should never, never marry. marry. Uh, we'll have to have you back on and talk about that. Thank you so much. You this much. was awesome. Thank you. But now I want to ask you a question. This is a game, mm -hmm. and it's called What Would You Do? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so there's a woman out of New York, New Jersey. Her name is Sarah. She's a successful editor at a major magazine company. Sarah's ready for a career change. She's gifted in writing, and it has been her passion since childhood. She is unsure if she should continue writing, although she's tired, or should she pursue something else altogether? If you were Sarah, what would you do? If I was Sarah, I would probably try to, to um, schedule the quickest vacation I possibly could. I would turn my cell phone off. Okay. I wouldn't answer any emails, and yeah. I would just kind of get back in touch with Sarah. Mm. I would go away for a couple of weeks. I would either cruise, I'd get out of the country. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to make a, a major decision mm -hmm. about your life when you're mm -hmm. in the same state, in the same mm -hmm. city. The yeah. reason why is because everything is so close to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've got to just kind of get away from all of that, just mm -hmm. so you can get back in touch with who you are. Mm -hmm. she, it's, it's, it's quite obvious she loves to write. She's right. been doing it since she's little. Right. She loves it. It's what she's good at. And I always right. tell people, the thing that brings you income, mm -hmm. the thing that brings you income or revenue mm -hmm. is the thing that you need to con continue to pursue. Right. She does that probably effortlessly, right. but she's burnt out. And right. if you're burnt out, it becomes a job. Gotcha. And if it ever becomes, it's just like ministry, it's like preaching. Yeah. Yeah. If a pastor feels like it's a job, mm -hmm. then he begins to he begins to bicker and pester. Mm -hmm. So there's no more pastoring, it's pestering. Mm -hmm. And you have guys right now that are over flocks mm -hmm. that have been there 20 years, but the guy hasn't had a vacation in mm -hmm. 10 years. The man's burnt out. Mm -hmm. And so now, in re rather than moving the people towards revival, he's in mm -hmm. survival. Mm. But no one has sense enough to say, hey, this man needs a break. Right. And so yeah. there has to be someone to say, we need to send our pastor away. That's why I say every pastor, I don't care what you're doing, whatever vocation it is, mm -hmm. if you have the means to do it, mm -hmm. every three months you need to just get away. Yeah. You know, you go on yeah. three vacations a year. You take the kids on one. Yeah. Usually you need another vacation after you drop them off. Right. Then, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I took my kids on vacation. And yeah. once I took them on, it's like, you just need another vacation <laughs> right. after that vacation, yeah. but you need two yeah. to fall in love with each other all over again. Right. And I always tell people, I said, you need to love your spouse. Mm -hmm. Love your spouse. And mm -hmm. this is going to sound crazy. Mm -hmm. Love your spouse even more than your children mm -hmm. because your kids are going to grow up and leave you. Good. You have a daughter yeah. that's in Howard right now. Absolutely. They start off calling you, then they start off yeah. texting. Then it's like, <laughs> Mom, I need you to make that deposit. Yeah, right. But it's the same thing with the, you know, yeah. with the spouses. Yeah. You, you, you have got to have a connection because if your children are all you have, mm -hmm. when they leave, that's mm -hmm. it. The relationship that's so good. Over. So now let me ask you this because obviously Sarah, and, and when you say that women at large are a lot more emotional mm -hmm. than men, so she could, could she be the emotional wreck? Or could she just be tired? She's just exhausted. She's burnt out. Okay. She's burnt out. Okay. But emotional wreck, people, women that are emotional wreck okay. consistently on roller coasters and they need you to, you know, constantly counsel them and hold yeah. their hand and yeah. walk them through. Okay. And sometimes, regardless of what you do, it's not good enough. Right. You know, yeah, that's a man, good. When he, a emotional wreck, yeah. you know, a man, if a man really loves you, he'll get up two or three o'clock in the morning go get you Rocky Road, Butter Pecan. Yeah. He'll even go get you sanitary napkins if right. he loves you. Right. You know, he's not going to be like, that's not my thing. Right. If the man loves you if you're he's sick. He's going to be accommodating. If you're sick and, you, if you're, sick and you're on a, on a, on a boat ride mm -hmm. and, and you just happen to regurgitate everything that's up mm -hmm. and your false teeth fall in the bag, <laughs> if he loves you, he'll reach in the bag, oh, Lord. pull your teeth out, <laughs> clean them off, and give them back to you to put in your mouth. All right. That's somebody when they're really in love with you. When they're really in love. Right. So let me ask you this. How important do you think family plays in this? You know, a man dating a woman, a woman dating a man. Is it important that they understand what kind of family dynamics there are? It's important to understand because there are sometimes there's some psychological issues and sub issues that are in the subconscious realm that you don't know about but if you sit around people's family and you study them long enough see I have I, there's a certain there's a certain kind of standard I have mm -hmm. uh, and you know years ago we just kind of took our hands off and mm -hmm. but but if you really want your kid your children to be successful you need to be a part of it and you need not necessarily be in the mix mm -hmm. but you need to be a part of the mm -hmm. decision mm -hmm. uh, my children I've kind of basically prepared them my son knows there's certain telltale sign of I've educated him on. My daughter is no nonsense. Mm -hmm. If it's not working, you know, she's just going to, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that, yeah, your family's important because a lot of times you, you, you marry a crazy family, mm -hmm. then you start seeing the, that, that same spirit starts <laughs> that working. DNA. Through, and you bring them in. And then it's yeah. a top, and especially when they have a, a hold on your spouse. Right. If it's a hold on your, your wife or mm -hmm. hold on the husband. If you mm -hmm. see whenever he's around them, 
their whole personality changes. Mm. You know, they can't be as affectionate to you. And that's another thing. A lot of people, a guy, guys are demanding or women are demanding. My husband's not affectionate. My wife's not affectionate. Well, you look around the family. Nobody hugs each other. Mm. Nobody kisses each other. Everybody's jealous. So while you're dating, you got to pay attention to you that. you got to pay very close because attention. Because if they're not, if they're not, a, they don't come from an affectionate family, then they don't see the need to be affectionate, and that's going to always be an issue. Oh, I got. Let me give you one quick example. There's a guy mm -hmm. that I know that that uh, well, a mutual friend, a guy married. He was getting ready to propose to this girl. Gave a beautiful five carat ring. Mm -hmm. I mean, just he'd been dating her three. His girl was absolutely gorgeous, mm -hmm. drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But he would always go over her house. Mother, good house, good, mm -hmm. mother, good mom, everything. But when he one day he went into, he'd always stay in the living room, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But one day well, something, almost out of time. something prompted him to open the door. Uh -huh. When he opened the door, the house looked, the, her bedroom was a mess. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and he called her and said, you've been to all our family's houses. You see everybody's clean. He called it, he called it he off. He called it off. He said because. Which was so smart. Right. It was so good. They cut it right then because he knew it was going to be an issue. Dr. Kirvin Smith, everybody, make sure you get the book, Seven Women You Should Never Marry. <laughs> All right, now it's time for Reality Watch. Okay, what are we talking about today? Match made from heaven. This show features Sean Bullard, 34-year-old, once uh, engaged but never married, successful real estate developer looking for love among 24 different women with a small twist. Sean has the help of his mom and a pastor. Actually. Ben and I went to the premiere for Match Made in Heaven. And, you know, listen, I understand there's a lot about non-traditional dating, even though I still like it when boy can meet girl, look her in the eye and say, can I go out with you? I mean, I understand that there's some success stories on online dating. And for a long time, I really wasn't for it. I'm not saying that I'm totally for it, but I can't say I'm totally against it because I have seen a family member of mine has had a tremendous amount of long-term success, actually, in a marriage. It actually was the perfect man for her, and they've grown and developed tremendously. But then I have another situation where a family member was dating online and come to find out the guy was married, okay? So, and of course, they can become whatever they want to become because it's a screen. Like when people are like, oh, that's my Facebook family. They're not really your family. <laughs> they don't know you. <laughs> so use Facebook and I think social media to promote businesses and that kind of thing. But I think you got to be careful if you're really looking for a love because this is a person you don't know. Now, can it work? Maybe it can. And Sean and the 24 women, I think it's just too much. You know, try to find one girl, date her, get to know her, but to try to choose 24 women to stand in this house, that's just, that's a mess to me. But we like Sean, good guy. I hope it, it work out. I don't know. But anyway, remember, until next time, this has been the Jewel Tanker Show. And remember that you can have it all.